What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. We are still pushing forward on the Porsche 924S and the air suspension that I'm putting together for that car. Now the management finally showed up yesterday from Bag Riders. I'm gonna walk you guys through what I'm gonna be running for management in this car. Uh, we're gonna unbox everything and go through that very shortly. But to get you guys up to speed, all the hardware is in the car. We've got the Subaru front dual bellow strut bags from Airlift. We had to redrill and cut a few things on the strut assemblies, but no welding required and no modifications to the Porsche body was required either. The rears are using the dual bellow builder series from Airlift. It's an eyelet to eyelet mount, right where the OEM shock is, where you would normally do a coilover conversion in these cars. Again, nothing cut on the body. What we did have to cut was the shark fin mount on the torsion tube itself, which is there only for an anchor point for the torsion bar suspension. Since we removed the torsion bars altogether in this, as if you were completely converting to coilovers in one of these cars, we cut that off the torsion tube altogether and removed the bolt-in mount up on the frame rail. So again, nothing cut on the Porsche body itself. So now we have dual bellow bags front and rear on this car, and that was the whole point of this build. Every 944 or 924 I've seen bag utilized sleeve bags in one way or another because of the limited space that's in the rear. And it's tight back there, especially if you don't cut off the shark fin and the mount that it mounts to up on the frame rail. So space was really, really tight. And I had yet to see somebody do a single or dual bellow bag in an OEM placement on these cars. So that's the overall gist. Everything's in now. Everything's mounted. There's still some fine detailing work to do. But so far, everything's looking great. The last episode, I got the lips refurbished and stripped down and polished for the BBS RSs that are going on the car. Tires are on the way. They should be here tomorrow. So we're getting close. Uh, at this point in the next two weeks, we will be in Helen, Georgia for Alpine Volks Fair. I kind of set that as the date where I wanted the car done and driving with all the suspension and wheels all finished. All right, guys. So Bag Riders came through yet again with the management. They are indeed the official sponsor uh, because I'm working with them on this project and I cannot thank them enough for coming on board and uh, getting everything out as quickly as possible with the time frame we are working with. Uh, my buddy Zach over there at Bag Riders has been a huge help. So huge thanks to all the guys there um, for everything they do and all the support they show here uh, in the shop on the channel as well. So all the management is in. We're gonna get things opened up and I'll show you guys what I'm gonna be using in the Porsche 924S. So, I'm looking at a different harness than I've ever used before in a car. And that is because I'm using a different management than I've used in a car before. We've got fittings, tank mounting hardware it looks like. We've got some leader lines. We've got airline, quarter inch as usual. I like bagging my cars or I like plumbing my cars with quarter inch airline. I've done three eights in a couple cars way back in the day and they were heavier cars and the three eights line was far too fast. All right guys, this is what is different on this project. Feel air management. The Bag Riders guys had to talk me into running this system. As many of you may know, I've been running the Airlift 3P and 3H system in my cars for almost the last 10 years now and been using it pretty exclusively in all of my cars since then. I'd say, probably seven or eight cars. I did run AccuWare in my Toyota Century when I first bagged that car. And then within the first month of uh, the pandemic in 2020, AccuWare went under. And then I was too nervous about running that system in the car with no sales support or service left over. So I ended up putting 3P in that car as well. I've had it in many cars and I really like it, I really do. But Zach and the Bag Riders guys have talked me into running this feel air system in the Porsche. They really like it. They have this in a few of their shop cars at Bag Riders, and they really do like it. I'm eager to set it up and um, see how I like it. So I'm gonna bring you guys along with an unbiased outlook on the feel air system that is available over at bagriders.com. Okay, for the tank, let's see if I can get this off one-handed. Get it, come on. So, little two and a half gallon, but the car is not that big and it's not that heavy. And I want to put all of this in the spare tire well. If you guys remember back about a month or two ago, I did a series on bagging an S124 state wagon out at my friend Sutton's shop in California. And that car was really challenging as far as hiding the management in the side spare tire well. But it got me thinking about this car and I really kind of want to put this management 
in the spare tire wall in this car too. And that's not on the side. And there is a pretty deep well I can fit some stuff in. So with how small some of this stuff is, I think we'll fit it all easily. But also um, the tank with the 444 via air compressor, we're gonna be in good shape as far as volume of air and capacity of air for how heavy the car is. All right guys, so here's the layout. They even included some stickers. I'm gonna get a few more made for the car itself. Uh, but tank, tank fitting kit, even have a drain kit that they provide, which is great. Comes with a PTC fitting and a Schrader valve, I believe at the end. Uh, so you can just run this out of the car and drain or fill the tank whenever you need to, if the compressor isn't running. The feel air manifold with controller, which I kind of like. I, I wasn't too certain about the Acura controller. I like the 3P one a lot. Again, might be because that's what I'm used to. But for the price difference, a few hundred dollars, uh, you might want to go with the feel air system. Again, I'll give you my full in review on this as the car gets done. All right, well, I put the exhaust back in simply because I wanted to know exactly where my space allowance was going to be for the rear bags as I get the leader lines plumbed in. So I wanted to know where I could run my lines without spinning components, articulating components, like the trailing arm going up and down because this space gets significantly tighter when it airs down, and also heat components. I wanted to keep everything away from the exhaust and I just wanted to know exactly what kind of space I had. So now that the exhaust is back in, I wanna get the rear strut bags out and then back in for the last time. So I'm gonna run some spacing on this lower bolt since this bottom's out before uh, the, the shock is tight. So I'm gonna thread that in and I wanna space it away from the trailing arm a little bit anyway. So I'm gonna put a little bit of spacing right in here and then again at the top because the top eyelet doesn't quite fit snug in that cage. All right, so I spent some time tidying up the rear end. Uh, I got the rear airbags uh, in and fastened, tightened down, got the leader lines in and sealed, uh, just trying to like cover a few more bases. So when I'm back under the car running airlines, there's less I have to do as far as the bags are concerned. So now we got the car down, got most of the upholstery out. And what we're looking at is the spare tire well. I got the jack out, I got a plate frame off. I uh, just kind of cleared up some space in here. And this is pretty deep. It should be wide enough and deep enough uh, to fit most of the management. Might be able to build a frame off of these mounts if I have to, uh, to mount the tank and the compressor too. So I'll go get some of the management and um, we'll kind of figure this out for the first time since the management just came in. I think I'm gonna put the tank on the bottom and then I'll put the compressor and the manifold up top since I've got more space. It gets narrower as it goes down. Picked up some one inch, I'm sorry, half inch thick uh, MDF. So the half inch MDF will be pretty strong. I think the only place I'm gonna mount it is through these 10 millimeter uh, threaded ports, which are strong. Trying to design it so it's modular, so it'll be removable, but also have accessibility to all the components you need access to. All right, so I got a piece of MDF cut and mounted. I've got one hole drilled. It's quite a stout bolt, and I think with two of them, it's gonna hold it quite well. I did cut off the bump stops that were on each side of it, um, each side of the mount. They stuck out too far. Haven't decided yet if I'm going to re-weld those on. Um, I might, just to act as 
as better stops uh, for leverage that the compressor might put on this whole thing uh, when it's running. And the weight, but uh, I'm not too concerned about the weight since these two bolts are, are quite strong and this is half inch thick MDF. Okay, so this might be taking a long route, but I was already sitting here at the computer at the laser machine and I'm about ready to start drilling some holes in the MDF piece. So I'm here on the computer and I'm just gonna make a quick template that I'm gonna laser cut out of construction paper so I can just scribe my four mounting points for the tank. And since I'm a little OCD and I've got a precision machine, uh, we're gonna go this route. Sometimes you can use the laser for making templates. If you're quick on the CAD um, and it doesn't take too much more time to set the machine up, it's really quite amazing. Uh, some precision things you can do. I don't have a CNC plasma cutter here yet. For those of you who have been on the channel for a while, you know I was real close to pulling the trigger on one uh, back a few months ago. My father has one, and I used to work out of his shop back home in New Hampshire, and so I feel lost and afraid without one. Um, we obviously started working with all hand tools, and then once my dad got that machine, and I was already working on my laser machine, uh, which can't cut steel, it was super easy to just design parts, pre-pro them out of cardboard on my laser machine, and then take a final file to my father's plasma cutter and cut them out of steel uh, one go and not waste a bunch of metal. So I really, really want to get a four by four foot CNC table in that part of the shop. Hopefully soon, if you guys stick around on this channel, the moment I buy one of those machines will be a seriously big moment for me here in the shop, uh, especially doing it all on my own, being self-employed, big time moves. Okay, so this is the feel air manifold and it is new to me because as I mentioned earlier, I am certainly more used to the airlift 3P and 3H systems. This came metric thread and bag riders because of this and selling to people in America would, wouldn't be able to find metric airline or metric air fittings anywhere. Bag riders made these custom brass thread on one end and American PTC fitting on the other. So this is a quarter inch PTC fitting on one end and the appropriate thread pitch, the thread into the manifold on the other. We've got a couple elbows and we got four straight. Also what's really cool is much like the Airlift 3P manifold, this little cover here with the logo on it is removable. And you already know, if you remember some of the custom stuff I've done in my cars with the 3P system, we're gonna take that off and we're gonna laser cut and laser engrave a custom Ludwig's Garage one right there. All right guys, management is in. And as I mentioned before, there's still a lot more to do. Uh, airlines to hook up. I haven't plumbed the car yet. I haven't wired the car yet. So I still need to connect a lot of the components that are in here, but I did connect the tank to the manifold. So I've got my supply line run. I'm also really stoked on the, the cleanliness or the tidiness of how everything fit down in the spare tire well. I'm pretty stoked on this, I really am. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think of the overall project, but also what you think of utilizing the spare tire well to hide all the management. I'll be the first to admit that I wanna do everything I can to keep spares in my car. But luckily, since this is got a lot of room if you fold the rear seats down, and the rear seats, let's be honest, a normal sized human being can't really fit in them. So if you had that folded down, you've got more than enough room for a full-size spare. 
and enough space on the cubby holes for tools, a uh, tool bag, a jack even. Huge thank you to everyone who put an order in at ludwigsgarage.com for all the new merch that's available there now. The link to the web store is in the video's description below. So again, thanks so much for watching guys. Real excited to see you back here again in the next episode where we continue on with the Porsche 924S airbag project. We're gonna be wiring the car and plumbing it next. Thanks for watching.